Ahmed Polat, you yesterday you had a beautiful uh, lecture about your work, and uh, it was really interesting your personal story uh, and going along with um, with your pictures. Can you tell me more about the background of um, of your quest, as you said it? Yeah. Um, it started, uh, I think, uh, when I was like uh, 16, 17. I became aware of the fact that um, uh, not everybody looked at me and uh, said that I was a, a real Dutch or a real Turkish person. And um, uh, this was always a very difficult uh, position to be in because for me this was nothing, uh, uh, nothing separate. Mm -hmm. It was something that was uh, two worlds of my uh, father and my mother who are Dutch and Turkish. Uh, is uh, something that was combined. But I guess the world outside of me didn't look at those things in that way. So uh, when I started uh, photography uh, in uh, the art school, um, I didn't really know that where it was going to take me, but I just felt it was the right thing to do. Uh, so uh, I decided to, to first start uh, photographing my uh, my Turkish family because I, you know, I knew them from my childhood, but I, I really didn't know them that well. Um, and photography was for me a way to discover this, these uh, these roots uh, of my uh, of my ancestors. Uh, so, so basically, you, you you went to Turkey. Your Turkish family in Turkey or in in Holland? Yeah, my, I didn't have any family in from Turkey in Holland, so they were all in Turkey. So I, I went there in 1999. And this was also the same time when the, the earthquakes happened, and my family was living in those earthquakes. Um, I, I you know I. This was a, a big, uh, a big shock for my uh, the reality that I came from, and uh, uh, to see uh, so much pain and suffering, uh, uh, and but still also so many strong people who are surviving. Um, this was, um, uh, I think, a very important uh, moment in my life uh, where I decided to um, to start working on uh, more personal and uh, stories and more the strength of, of people. Who were you photographing for? Were you doing uh, for, let's say, an assignment or no. just personal? Yeah, I was really there, there for my personal, uh, on a personal account. And, um, but while I was photographing, uh, I was, uh, you know, I, I was really wandering around and I, I couldn't really uh, decide what am I doing here. I felt very awkward. And um, so there was uh, one moment I really remember really well. There was, a, uh, everybody was waiting around one building, a girl they found still alive after four days uh, and all the news people were there and everybody was uh, trying to get a picture. And I was standing there with my camera and I got looked around and I go, what the hell am I doing here? I couldn't take it anymore and I walked away. I think maybe five minutes later an ambulance stopped behind me. People came running out shouting and stuff like that and that same little girl that survived just passed by me. And I took a picture and I, you know, it was for me, that picture was just to remember that moment. At that moment I decided that that's not the kind of work I would want to do. Um, to be a journalist, is, 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 it's just a different type of work. Um, so after, uh, after that moment I um, felt more strong on what I wanted to do in the work and uh, uh, funny enough, uh, a few days later I'm walking on the, on the beach on the seaside and I see some uh, old uh, buildings that I remember because it was a, a place where my family used to have a factory. And uh, I saw some people lying there and I, I recognized uh, uh, a guy over there and I walked over there and I said, like, hey, Dad, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> he said, like, hey, I'm it. <laughs> yeah, we're helping out some people here. And I got, like, like, we just had a normal, friendly conversation. But, you know, uh, he didn't know I was there and I didn't know he was there. And uh, so for me, that was... Uh, really to start in discovering uh, who my father was. I really didn't understand this guy. And it, it was also because, uh, you know, they, we was, my parents were separated mm -hmm. since I was uh, nine years old. And uh, so I didn't really get to see him that much. But to meet him there and from that moment on, I, it took, I, my life took a really uh, different path. And uh, how did photography, uh, what, what role did, did photography had uh, in, in that path of your um, discovering of, let's say, your um, Turkish uh, origin? It allowed me to, uh, uh, to see, uh, you know, to meet people, to go out, and I wasn't really, I was a quiet guy, so uh, for me I used photography to push my own boundaries and to go out and to, to, um, to meet my family and photograph them. And, uh, but at the same time, I was looking at you know, all my photographs. I was always seeing myself 
reflected in the moments. Like the way you are is how the people perceive you. And that was a really, I was really conscious about how I approached people, what I was doing with my photography while I was photographing. And uh, so it was a personal growth mm -hmm. through photography. Uh, and at that time, I, I, like I said, I wasn't interested in selling my work. I wasn't interested in doing it for anybody else, just for me. It was a very egocentric trip for me, mm -hmm. but it was really, really important mm -hmm. to, uh, to make it. Mm -hmm. And what were you photographing? What were your motives? What I realized is that the issue of uh, identity, of being in between cultures, is not something just for me. You know, it's not, I'm not the only one. Um, a lot of people who are living in Europe in this moment, you know, they are also like Turkish or Moroccan or they have different backgrounds and uh, not only in Holland or in Germany, but there's a lot of people who have traveled and migrated, uh, it's, you know, part of all our uh, uh, lives uh, and it affects people so strongly. Uh, so um, I really try to photograph in the villages in Turkey w w that were affected by these migrations to Europe. Uh, and photograph uh, the people that were left behind and the families that were living alone without their husband there or uh, these kind of things. And um, your work received quite a lot of recognition and uh, attention. Can you please explain um, how, how did that happen and how did that affect your career? I was working together with a, um, a museum in Holland and an archive. Uh, and uh, they've uh, asked me if I would want to exhibit my work also in the villages in Turkey. That's, uh, that's where we were uh, photographing at that time. Um, and so the, when I was exhibiting it there in those small villages, like one of the biggest things I remember that was really important for the work as well, but also for the, uh, the effect that photography could have was the fact that uh, our Dutch uh, queen uh, visited Turkey, uh, went to Istanbul, went to Ankara, and went to that village. And it was because of the project that we did about those um, migration families. So that was a big thing, you know, to, to uh, create a, an effect on such a political level. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, one of the uh, exhibitions that I did also was also in Istanbul. And um, I remember um, that somebody came up to me and uh, I didn't know who that person at uh, that time was. But it uh, ended up to be the curator of the Istanbul Modern. Uh, which is a modern museum in Istanbul mm -hmm. and at the same, same time she was the nominator for the ICP award mm -hmm. so uh, I got uh, she asked if I was interested in uh, in this nomination and I said like yeah sure but I really didn't know what it was so uh, after a few months uh, I mean I did the work uh, send in my portfolio and uh, I got this phone call and she said like Ahmed um, did you uh, do you know the news and they go like, no well, what do you mean well, well you won the ICP award and I go like holy shit <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because at that time I understood what it was and uh, it's, it was such a big change uh, on so many levels I mean I went to New York and uh, I saw a lot of my heroes uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, Lee Friedlander and Don McCollin and uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah uh, Cornell Kappa was there as well and uh, you just all of a sudden are uh, amongst uh, certain photographers that you've always am admired mm -hmm. in the way they worked. Your project about um, uh, migrants, uh, is it, you said it's finished or it's not? Or? Well, I decided to, uh, to finish this eight-year project and um, right now I'm into like, you know, uh, together with the book and the exhibition and the lecture, I think this is really uh, uh, working well as a whole, but I'm still working on, on similar issues. Uh, I'm, I'm still working on a new exhibition for next year in the Foam Museum in, in Amsterdam, which is about the Turkish youth. Uh, that also a lot of people who are in that uh, in that area of the world, you know, they're still struggling with their identity. Are they European? Are they, uh, you know, Eastern? Uh, those kind of things. And uh, so I see a lot of similarities with uh, with the subjects that I'm, I'm working on at the moment. And uh, it's a really good place to be at the moment. Uh, very excited about the work that's going on. So uh, yeah. And we are happy that to, to see and share the excitement with you. It's definitely you are emitting uh, very a lot of good energy in that sense. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank a lot. you.